At the top of Group C, K-1, his final run here in the Group of 64. It's my pleasure to welcome Darren Broderick, all the way from Ireland, representing Liberty Mutual to the stage. First of all, what a laugh. Where did that come from? Um, yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> part of it is maybe um, having a few different medals that you can fall back on. So we had a very good model of the nickname Ziggy, and it has done quite well. Where did the nickname come from? Um, it's actually, I love the zigzag default oh, okay. model, and I think a lot of an XLR are trying to keep something reliable means the less it steers, the better it should be. So I just call it Ziggy, and it stuck, because it's the model that got us here in our own wild card race. And then it's done quite well across a lot of the tracks, but it just wasn't doing well enough in the last two. So I had a backup model precision that was more reliant on steps rather than vehicles. Okay, so let's take us through the process of qualifying to be here. For a lot of the competitors, it was pretty straightforward. You went to a summit, you want, you're here. Not so for you. You're one of our wild card entries. Yep, yep. So um, about May time this year, Liberty Mitchell started. Um, Round of 64 and uh, Deep Research Championship. So at the start, um, we had five teams and we were worried we weren't going to get enough for 16. Then they said, well, what about the winner goes to Vegas? And then we had 64. <laughs> it is. So that broke down in the same way as with 32, 16, 8, and 4. And um, even during a couple of times when we were close to being put out ourselves. So it, being nearly put out like we were a few months ago, I think helps just make yourself a bit riskier. And as um, they always says, you get that one good lap. Luckily, we only get a couple of good laps. Um, but what I try to do is try to get one good lap going around, up by one. And then, especially this course, it's a lot different. I find once you go past the tricky hairpin at the start, and you make that final right turn, you can really, really handle the speed. If you can just keep it right before the start line. So that's what I started doing. Now you went into your final race on the outside looking in, but you didn't know that. No, uh, <laughs> we were biking on the fast lap to get us up to maybe like a low high nine, and then that was actually our worst one. I uh, don't know why. Um, and then 10.1 saw us in four, so we thought that should be okay. But then after we raced and got that great time, came back and saw that we really actually made it that time. So better to not move, but. Uh, it just depends how you, if it helps you get some compatible way Your colleagues were talking to me earlier, this is not the first time you've had your backs against the wall. They said every time it comes to an elimination, it comes down to your final race, and somehow you come through. <laughs> never for all this. <laughs> never in my life. Um, it's, this is the third time we've had to survive running loss on the last lap. Every time it's been more important. So the first one we ran the local Belfast and uh, Northern Ireland League. We were dead last out of 10 teams. And that was the first two of victory that we ran last. And in the last 20 seconds, we got a 13.11. <laughs> and that won us. So that was really good. And then we had to do the exact same over in, in, in Portsmouth. Was we were last, so which means we ran last. Which means we had to be at 8.16 time. And then in two minutes we got that 7.61. And then uh, once we did that, I stopped at the top of the time. And I tried to improve the model again. I actually took it down into Dublin, Ireland. And unofficially clocked a 6.4. Wow. But um, we tried to do the same with qualifiers, but just couldn't. Yeah. Sometimes it's just not the cars, cars race. But we couldn't believe it. We were just watching it. And Fernando from Amazon Dublin was just so wow. And he was just videoing it. So we were really excited to bring that to you, and at least the ones from now. Well, speaking of wow and the wow factor, we were both marveling about what our new world record time looks like. We saw Sola in action earlier today, a nine second flat lap. Now your lap is tremendous, but you've got the better part of a second to find if you want to challenge what uh, the gauntlet that she's put down. Pretty much, so if I'm racing her tomorrow, the plan is look over there and then hopefully distract her. <laughs> um, the thing to beat Solara is it's really, if she's consistent and you're not consistent enough, you might just have to gamble, take a chance to to try and just cut that. Ryan's going to be so tough to beat. Like when I was watching her lap, there wasn't much room for error. And so it's great that she's got to be a world record tennis. Because when I watched the Deep Racer TV and I first saw the Japan episode, 
punk and chatty with levels, and it's like, wow, these guys are just... Is that part of what hooked you? Oh yeah, definitely. Glenn's um, interviews, Amsterdam episode was the first one I watched. He was, um, when he talks about centerline models, and people surprised him, he's just so entertaining. So that's actually me and Glenn and uh, I watched just from uh, cutting snippets to say, like, what are right ones? Let's find out what they are, and um, just watch all of them. So going into the round of 16, it looks like it should be pretty safe at this stage with your uh, with your 9.331 times had a few moments to go. But the format does change. It becomes head-to-head -head racing. Have yeah. you done anything like that before? No, never. Um, and even it actually really is quite dependent on what track we're racing. So we got a 10.1, a 10.8, a 9.3. <laughs> so I would prefer maybe not track, <laughs> but. During the practice one, we managed to come second for the day on that track over there, so hopefully I had a bit of luck. Um, I did plan to experiment more, but because everyone's times are so competitive, I had to stick with the model I thought was best. So, yeah, tomorrow it's maybe wait and see what you're up against, um, but I don't think you can ever relax until, um, until it's called. Yeah, we've seen that throughout the course of the season, building up to this, I would be stunned if that was not the case for the rest of the week here. Really appreciate you stopping by, Darren. Thank appreciate you. the insight. Congratulations on the great lap. Our current leader in Group C, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Darren Roderick. Woo. Woo. Woo.